Christine Lagarde is one of the most powerful leaders in global finance. She is managing director of the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. She pushes for world cooperation despite fears of economic insecurity and terrorism. And we're pleased to have her here in Studio 57. Welcome. Thank Just you. Play, we have many questions for you about the global economy and China and oil and all of that. But first, what uh, we said to Senator Sanders about financial institutions being too big. Does the global economy need for banks to be broken up? You know, I would be more concerned about the non-bank financial institutions at the moment. So I know there is a lot of focus like on what? banks and how they should be broken up. I think a lot of work has already been done into being able to resolve them if they fail to deliver. But there is a lot of financial uh, transactions happening outside the banks. The and this shadow is, banking? This is, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there is good shadow banking, there is bad shadow banking. But I think that what matters is that this shadow banking sector has to be supervised, has to be regulated, so that the trust that most people have in the banking institutions, in the financial sector in general, be protected. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the health of the global economy. I know you said in a speech this week that it's facing increased risk and uncertainty and that we are on alert. What worries you? What worries me is that weak is too fragile and weak is and growth is at risk. Mm -hmm. It's at risk because you have the combination of uh, Chinese uh, slowing down, legitimately so, but slowing down. You have low commodity prices and we think for much longer. And third, you have financial tightening caused by the different monetary policies that are being used around the world between the Fed, the Bank of Japan and the ECB. And that produces tightening of financing and variation of uh, currencies which are hurting. Mm -hmm. So the combination of the three are exposing a fragile weak, a fragile growth mm -hmm. at the moment. Are you worried about the Chinese growth? I'm not worried about it because I believe that 6.5% is nothing to be ashamed of. Which is part of but their five-year plan. It is lower than what uh, we have experienced with uh, China over the years. So it is slowing down. It is moving from manufacturing, a certain kind of manufacturing, to more services, moving from exports to more domestic markets. And it is changing in terms of monetary policy and uh, exchange currency regime. So all of that combined is an incredible uh, shift to, you know, organize, manage, and for people mm -hmm. to anticipate. So uh, we're not worried. We don't think that there will be any hard landing, as has been sometimes feared. But equally, uh, it's, it's a big, big change. And, and what about the, a huge what, influence. Yeah, I was going to say, and what about the U.S. economy? I mean, what recommendations do you have for the U.S. economy? We recommend for many countries, U.S. included, what we call the three-pronged approach. And it means taking structural measures, adopting a sound growth-friendly fiscal policy, and using monetary policy to support the other two. So this is what we recommend. To give you an example, in the US, for instance, uh, we believe that uh, minimum wage would be a very good idea. It's you know, Increasing when you, the minimum wage. Yeah. yeah. To what, $15 an hour? I don't know exactly what the right threshold would be. I think that there are differences between states and there are, you know, uh, mm. states where it's within the jurisdiction of the state authorities. But it's pretty concerning when you see that 50 million American people live in poverty and that in that 50 million, 40% actually have a job. Speak to the issue of trade because mm -hmm. in the political debate, both parties have problems with trade. And you're really sounding the alarm bells about protectionism, saying even yes. if the average man is worried that they basically, the cards are stacked against them, they should avoid this knee-jerk reaction to say, let's avoid other countries. Well, history has told us time and again that uh, building barriers, moving to protectionism, thinking that you can just deal with international, totally interconnected issues such as pandemics, such as terrorism, such as refugees, behind borders is an illusion and is very conducive to extremely disruptive situations. We've seen that in Europe, we've seen that in many parts of the world. Walls don't actually change the situation for the better. Uh, Donald Trump has proposed a 45% tariff on China. What would that do to the global economy? I think it would be massively disruptive. Um, I also think that all countries are part of a big club which is called the WTO which requires that 
tariff and non-tariff barriers be discussed, many eliminated, in order to facilitate trade. So I would very much hope that the United States continue to be a leader uh, in the world economy and a good player of a game that it has determined uh, the rules of. Finally, what would happen if uh, Britain leaves the European Union? We are in the process of assessing the economic outcome of such a decision, but we believe that it's not going, it would not be a, a positive, and uh, we very, I do great damage to the European economy. I personally economy very much hope that it doesn't happen. Christine Lagarde, wonderful, as always, to have you here. Thank you so much.